Good afternoon. We're sorry that we can't meet together as Messy Church today, but we thought you might like to do some things together as a family. And so we've come out into our garden to share some things with you. We're going to explore the story of Easter. You can make an Easter garden from things around your house, as Beth has, and the instructions of how she did it are going to be on the YouTube clip. Or you can make something in your garden or in a plant pot. Or you could decorate a cake instead. You can do whatever you would like. We're going to show you how to clean some dirty coins, reminding us of how we're made clean when we say sorry to God. You can make some paper flowers to pray for those you love. Let's have a look at the first part of our story. It's called A Dreadful Day and it's written by somebody called Bob Hartman. When Jesus and his friends had finished their goodbye meal, they walked to a garden to pray. So there's our first garden. That's where Jesus' enemies found him. The men had torches and clubs and sticks and they were very frightening. And right in front was Judas, who'd been one of Jesus' friends. Judas crept up to Jesus and kissed him on the cheek. This is the man you want, said Judas. Arrest him. Jesus looked very sad. Jesus' friends were scared. Most of them ran away, but not Peter. He pulled out a sword and started swinging it about. Put your sword away, said Jesus. This is not the time for fighting. I have to go with them. God wants me to. So they grabbed Jesus and dragged him before the religious leaders, the ones who were jealous of him. His trial took all night. He says he will destroy our temple, said one man. He says he's a king, said another. He's a troublemaker, said one and all. None of this was true, of course, but it didn't matter because the leaders had already made up their minds. Jesus was different from them. Jesus wouldn't do what they said, so Jesus would have to die. They beat Jesus. They hit him hard. Then they took away his clothes, put an old robe around his shoulders and jammed a crown made of thorns on his head. They called him names and made fun of him. So you think you're a king, they laughed. Well, look at you now. Jesus never said a word. His body hurt, his heart was breaking, but he never said a word. They took a cross next, made of heavy wood, and they laid it on his back. Move along, they shouted, and led him through the city. Some people cried when they saw him, others cheered, but all of them followed as he lugged that cross through the city gates and up a nearby hill. When they got to the top, they laid Jesus on the cross. It hurt so much. Then they raised the cross so that everyone could see, and they left him there to die. A thief hanging next to him was afraid, but Jesus talked to him and helped him feel better. Jesus' mother was there too, standing in the crowd. So Jesus called to one of his friends, take care of her for me, will you, John? She's your mother now. But most of the faces in the crowd were not so kind. You saved other people, someone laughed, so why can't you save yourself? Jesus knew why. It wasn't because his enemies had won, it was because God wanted him there to take away all the bad things anyone had ever done. Soon the sky grew dark and the earth shook. It was as if God's own heart was breaking and then it happened. It's done, Jesus whispered. And in the sadness and the dark, he died. At Christmas, we remember that Father God loves everyone so much that he sent his son Jesus into the world so that we could know him. And at Easter, we remember that Jesus died so that we can be forgiven for all the wrong things we do. So, let's look at the second part of our story. 
but there's been a little gap between the two. So when Jesus died, some friends came and they took his body down and they put it in another garden, which is another part of our Easter garden story. And they put a big stone in front of the tomb where his body was so that nobody could steal it. And that's where we come to today's story. It was very early. The birds were still in bed and the sun had yet to open its bright eye on the world. The sky was grey and grainy. The air was cold and the three women walked slowly towards the graveyard. Jesus was buried there and the women were coming to visit his grave. They talked in sad whispers. They cried. They held each other's hands. Jesus had been dead for three days and they missed him very much. Just as they reached the graveyard, however, some surprising things happened. The ground began to shake, the air began to tremble, and quick as lightning, an angel flashed down from heaven and rolled the stone away from Jesus' tomb. Everything went quiet. The ground stopped moving, but the women shook with fear. Don't be afraid, the angel said. <coughs> Come and see. The tomb is empty. Jesus is alive. <coughs> arm in arm, the women crept past the angel and into the tomb. The sheets were still there. The sheets they'd wrapped around his dead body. But Jesus himself was gone. Where is he? asked the woman. What have you done with him? I told you, smiled the angel, he's not dead anymore. He's come back to life and he wants you to tell all his friends. The women looked at each other. They didn't know whether to laugh or cry. They could hardly believe it. That is until they hurried out of the tomb and ran straight into Jesus. Oh Jesus, they cried, it's true, you are alive. And they fell at his feet amazed. There's no need to be afraid anymore, he said. God has made everything all right. But I have a job for you. I want you to tell the rest of my friends that I'm alive. Tell them I will meet them on the seashore in Galilee where all our adventures started. The women waved goodbye and hurried off to Jerusalem. The birds were singing. Now the sun's bright eye was wide open and they had an amazing story to tell. And that story is all in the garden too. So I wonder if you have anything that you would like to say sorry for today. Why not take a moment to say sorry to God, sure that he will forgive you. He loves you more than you can ever imagine. Jesus rose again and lives in heaven and one day will come back. I wonder if you'd like to share as a family together. What's your favourite part of the story? What bit really don't you like? Do you think there's some part of the story that could be missed out and we would still have that story? Have a chat with everyone in your family. I'm sure you'll all have different ideas and answers to those questions. If you'd like to share anything, that you've done together on WhatsApp, please let me know and I can add you to our new group if you haven't joined already. And just to finish with, I'd just like to say, may God bless you, your families, your homes, today and in the weeks and months ahead. Amen.